Conflict between President Trump and mainstream media has long been fairly contentious, but that recently escalated with his attempt to ban a reporter from CNN, Jim Acosta. A court decision has forced some regrouping by the White House, but some observers see the crossing of a sharp line. One of them is our guest, a former copy editor with the Boston Herald and a principal partner with Slowing McManus Communications. We'd like to welcome Jim McManus. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Jim. Thank you, Chris. Jim, you're also teaching uh, media and law uh, at uh, Emerson. Uh, what, what are you hearing from your students about this? That's right. They're very troubled by the attacks on uh, reporters that are coming from the White House, uh, the you know, enemies of the people rhetoric uh, and the banning reporters from covering certain um, uh, White House events press briefings, things like that. Uh, that's, that's not the usual state of affairs for American reporters to be faced with. Now, I, you, know, you, you, you and I both have probably been at a lot of events where you get a, a horde of, of reporters trying to split up a limited amount of access to some public figure. Uh, Jim Acosta may be a bit more aggressive, but what's the difference between that and what happened at the White House that prompted this? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, you know, there was this pre press briefing and Acosta asked the president uh, in a very, you know, challenging way, uh, some questions about this uh, made up, you know, invasion of, of uh, uh, folks from fleeing poverty and violence in Central America. And the president just cut him off and, you know, insulted him and CNN, uh, called him a terrible person, you know, uh, and called him fake news and all this. Now, with, and so CNN, uh, in response to the White House's uh, banning, uh, lifting his press credentials, CNN sued the White House and the president to uh, reinstate the, his press credentials, and they were successful. Um, and the White House challenged that, but the case has been dropped for now. Um, and so Jim Acosta is able to report from the White House. But with every lawsuit, you know, there, there's a backstory. And this backstory is the president kind of criticizing CNN relentlessly, calling them fake news and, you know, enemies of the people and um, criticizing not just the on air personalities, but the whole operation. And you know, when CNN started, their whole business model was to be the straight news operation. They were going to be the most impartial of the news. news uh, Neutral to a fault, maybe. Exactly, right. And they, I think they've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, and so, you know, for the president's strategy to be to undermine the most neutral uh, news organization, that, that's uh, intentional, I think. And he is, to his credit, he has said to reporters, uh, I'm going to criticize you so that when you criticize me, people won't believe you. Now, the, the other wrinkle in the story was uh, Acosta was reluctant to surrender the mic uh, when Trump wanted it to be handed off to somebody else. And there were conflict, conflicting versions of what happened with that. Uh, can you break that down? <laughs> sure. What I saw was uh, him holding on to the mic, trying to ask another question, and an intern from the White House tried to take the mic from him. And he objected to that and he, he, he didn't, you know, do anything um, inappropriate, but uh, apparently the White House released a, a doctored video that made it seem like he was uh, aggressive and that was not the case. But Jim Acosta is not the issue here. I mean, it could be anybody at CNN. Uh, you know, the, the Trump White House wanted to go after the media. And we've got a couple of uh, events coming down the pike that are going to really challenge and stress the relationship between the White House and the media, the Mueller investigation and report, and then the Democrats taking over uh, Congress and demanding to see, you know, the president's tax returns and investigating, um, you know, his ties to Saudi Arabia and Russia. Those, those things are going to really stress the relationship between uh, the press, and, and it's time for the press to really double down and, and do a good job. Uh, this is being a newsroom talking with Jim McManus from Slowly McManus Communications. Jim, how, how does uh, uh, or how do the media re respond to this uh, if, if they see it as a serious threat? Well, I think going to court was the right thing to do, and they were at, uh, CNN was able to rally the troops. A lot of news organizations, including Fox News, some of their competitors, uh, joined them in standing up for the First Amendment. The, the ruling, I should say, was very narrow. Uh, the judge um, decided that because the um, White House did not afford the reporter due process before they took away his press credentials, uh, that they had to uh, give them back. It was not decided on a First Amendment um, grounds. So 
it was a narrowly decided case and hopefully uh, you know the White House will not um, you know kind of come back and, and try to take away somebody else's credentials although there have been two other instances where this White House has banned the press from uh, reporting in retaliation for uh, some critical coverage one was uh, Caitlin Collins from CNN she was uh, prevented from covering an event uh, in 2017. And then there was a White House press briefing where uh, early on in the administration where reporters from some of the major news outlets weren't allowed to cover um, a press briefing. Well, one, one response from the Trump administration is to, th to think up a way to put more process in into sort of curtailing access. Uh, coming up with these rules, if you violate any of these rules, you know, you're out of here. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's, you know, ironic. Uh, first impression is that it's ironic that the Trump administration is the arbiter of uh, kind of decorum. Uh, the White House press briefing room is not a safe space for anybody. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of bullying. There's a lot of insults um, directed toward reporters. And so uh, they're able to set the ground rules. I mean, the, the case law in this area is that um, holds that, you know, if, if there's a uh, limited access to a government facility, to government officials, uh, the agency needs to create guidelines and needs to follow those guidelines. And so uh, that's what's happening here. And so um, it may be the case that they're able to um, set these rules uh, for reporters to that they have to follow. They have to ask one question, and if they're uh, deemed worthy of a follow-up, they'll be allowed to uh, ask a follow-up question. If not, they have to sit down and keep their mouth shut. I wonder if, if you look back um, before Watergate, um, even before the Kennedy assassination, there was a time when mainstream media and the government were a lot more cozy mm -hmm. with each other. Um, do you think that the, uh, the the greater split over the years in between that, uh, do you think that may have put the media in a more vulnerable position as far as support from the public? Yeah, I mean, it's clear that, you know, the media has a much more adversarial relationship with, with the government, with the White House. It's caused uh, both institutions to decline in the public's estimation. Um, and that's, you know, unfortunate in some ways. Uh, but, you know, the, um, it, it's important that someone hold government accountable. And what we've seen over the last two years is that Congress has not held the administration accountable for almost anything. And the best, you know, we know about a lot of things that have happened in the Trump administration in the 2016 election solely because of the reporting that's been done, not because of any congressional investigation. So it's important that reporters keep doing their job. That's uh, um, critical, and I think we're going to see over the next couple of years, uh, over the next couple of months even, how important that's going to be. What do you think this means in the mind of a reporter? Because on one hand, you want to hold people accountable, but you're desperate to get a story, to get access. I mean, they're under a lot of pressure, aren't they? Sure, they are. Uh, years ago, I had a White House press pass when I was a reporter in Washington, and I never used it because I felt that the information coming from the White House was so limited and um, canned. Uh, the best reporting that's done is done behind the scenes, in the coffee shops, in the restaurants, at the bars in Washington, poring over reports, you know, digging through information. That's where you really find out what's going on. You can hear from, uh, you know, the official statements from government officials, but they have very limited value. And as we've seen in this administration, you know, the bending the truth is, is kind of the first, uh, the first instinct. What I also see going on here uh, now, uh, obviously through litigation, is that uh, the mainstream media are actually more adversarial, you know, in, in a profounder sense of the man, meaning. And I mean, doesn't that also subtract from their objectivity, at least in the eyes of the public? Uh, it may. In fact, you know, polls are showing that uh, that, that might be the case. But uh, I would say that it's important for for everybody to realize that you know the president and the White House they're making very personal and professional attacks on the media, and there's a lot of bad will. There's a kind of a reservoir of bad will uh, between a lot of reporters and, and the White House. And the, in years past, there's always been a, a kind of, you know, when the lights go off and, you know, things are, people can get along and uh, joke. And that's not happening anymore because of the divisions, you know, very stark divisions um, and the suspicions about, you know, what reporters are really, uh, what their agenda really is. And 
you know, we've got a White House, you know, frankly, that's, uh, you know, kind of driven by conspiracies and misinformation. And uh, we've had a couple of stories in the last few days, the, um, you know, the climate change report and the, you know, it comes from the White House and the president says, well, I don't believe it. And then the trade policies, well, this, he says, you know, this is what's going to make America great again. And then GM announces uh, 14,000 layoffs in part because of the uh, trade policies. And so I think you're seeing, you know, the president running up against reality here, and that's going to cause a lot of tension. Um, but that's what, you know, that's what the news is these days. Unfortunately, we have some good professionals covering. What about the leverage of mainstream media uh, compared to the past? It, because if you look what's happened with social media, the cutbacks in staffing and staffing and mainstream media, mm -hmm. Trump using that word, the failing New York Times, the failing, <laughs> well, every, you know, maybe it's an exaggeration, but, but it, I mean, leverage is not what it used to be, is it? No, it's not. Uh, clearly, you know, the number of uh, daily readers of newspapers is not what it used to be. Uh, but you're seeing, you know, it, it's holding firm in some circles and in some important influential circles. Um, you know, the New York Times is, is doing very well, the Boston Globe, you know, digital readership is up, um, the Washington Post is doing very well, uh, it, Politico, Bloomberg, th those are not mainstream, I would say those are not, you know, uh, public, um, you know, popular well, Certainly press. not fringe though. No, they're not fringe and they do have large circulations and I think you're seeing uh, they do have an influence. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. Jim, Jim McManus from Slowly McManus Communications.